Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to be remembered as a, the preacher that preached Jesus, that loved Jesus. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. John, 3, John 12, 32. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Revelations 1 and 17, and I love this. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, telling me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And how the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, he is able also to say them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeth he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He's fighting for me right now. He's standing in the gap for me right now. He's reaching for me and you right now. Hallelujah. He ever liveth. You can touch him. Would you help me preach? Would you turn around and tell one person, not just that little old preacher up there, you can touch him. Tell somebody that. Make sure everybody in the room, somebody say that. You can touch him. For we have not a high priest. Hebrews 4.15 For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but of in all point tempted like as we are yet without sin Father anoint me today let your spirit fall in this house let me be your mouth that would speak to this to the, to the strong to the weak to the lost to the saved to the sick to the healed to the weary to the strong use me to help somebody on this Easter resurrection day grant it Jesus hallelujah Hebrews 2.17 we're forth in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brother brethren, that he might be a merciful and high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hebrews 2.18 2, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to scorch them that are tempted. Or another one say, therefore he has become like his brethren and sisters so that he could be merciful. He became like them so they could serve so he could serve as a faithful chief priest in God's presence and make peace with God for their sins. For having been put to the test himself, he's able to give help to others that are being tested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's human enough to understand you. He's human enough to understand your pain. He's human enough to know what betrayal feels like. He's human enough to know the pain of death. The Christian doctrine of salvation depends on the belief that Christ had to become fully human to share his full divinity with humanity. Jesus was human and divine. I want to establish a confidence, a strength, and a peace, and a faith in you today that, that you're not just in good hands, you're in the master's hands. I want to tell somebody today, I got a feeling you're going to be okay. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You'll win this battle. You're of God, little children, and I'll overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And, and he's a, he has all power in Matthew 28, 17. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. First Timothy 316 and, and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory hallelujah bless you my friends there is so much grief and pain in America so many people are dealing with death dealing with broken heart we have 19 people's story who lost somebody they loved this is how God healed them and restored them and helped them to get back up. We want to send this as a free gift to you. If you've lost someone or you know someone that's lost somebody dealing with grief, we want it to be a gift to you. We'll pay the postage. While you're on the phone, may we pray with you. May we ask the Lord to heal your brokenness. Call right now. Order this book. Call us or write us. But let us pray with you. We believe in the power of prayer. Thank you. and God bless you. Thank you. At conception, the angel said, And thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. 
so I can see this. This is not my sermon, Dave. I can see another little lady come up. She's squalling and her face is swollen. She's, Murray, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry they've done your baby like this. I am so sorry you're hurting. I wonder, I wonder if Murray didn't step back. Thank you. My heart's broke. I don't know if I can cry anymore. But could I be honest with you? You all call me the mother of Jesus, but I'm messed up. I got a lot of problems. I may have a temper. I may get discouraged. I may wrestle with some unforgiveness way back in the early part of our marriage when Joseph wanted to put me away. I, I got some things I ain't dealing good with. And I, and I ain't young anymore, and I'm going to die pretty soon. And I'm in a mess, and I don't have a Savior. So you think he's just my baby. That's my only door to heaven. That's my only way to heaven. And when he dies, yes, my baby's going to die. But when he dies in three days, he's going to get up. And he'll not just be my baby. He'll be my Savior. I've got to allow him to die. I've got to release him. I've got to let him go through this. Because he's my only door to salvation. Jesus was human enough to have a mother named Murray, but he was divine enough to be Murray's only Savior. He is small enough to lay in a manger, but he's big enough to defeat death. Tiny enough to be carried by a woman, but he's tough enough to carry the sins of the whole world. He is human enough to be birthed by a woman, but he is divine enough to be conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He was human enough to be bathed and changed as a child, but he's divine enough to cleanse the sins of the vilest sinner. Hallelujah. He was human enough to be lost from his mother at the age of 12, but he was divine enough to save a lost, hurting world. He was human enough to bleed, but he was divine enough that his blood covers sins. As a baby, he was human enough to receive gifts from the wise man, but he was divine enough to be the greatest gift ever given to a lost, hurt, broken world. And somebody ought to give him a praise right now. As a baby... As a baby, he was human enough. His family hid him in Egypt to escape death. But he was divine enough to walk out of a tomb and conquer death. Hallelujah. He was human enough to be baptized in water. But he was divine enough to walk on water. He was human enough to understand your pain. But he's divine enough to help you. Hallelujah. Would somebody let him help you today? He's human enough to know the pain of rejection. But he's divine enough to bend a broken heart. He's human enough to weep at last too. And the shortest scripture in the Bible, Jesus wept. But he's divine enough to cry Lazarus, come forth. Death, you've got to let him go. Roll back the stone. Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. He's human enough to ask a lost sinner woman for a drink of water, but he's divine enough to give her living water and change her life. He's human enough to understand your question, but he's divine enough to have all your answers. He's human enough to sweat, but he's divine enough to raise the dead. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the lily of the valley. I'm talking to you today about the Prince of Peace, the Rose of Sharon, hope for the hopeless, strength for the weary. Hallelujah. He's bread for the hunger, living water for the thirsty and he's salvation for every lost soul that calls on his name. I wish you'd call out the name of Jesus in union in here today. I wish somebody would say Jesus Jesus Jesus. Hallelujah. He's Prince of Peace, Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. He's human enough to eat a fish, but he's not divine enough to make Peter fishers of men. He's human enough to cry, Peter, do you love me? Yet he's divine enough to love the unlovable. He's human enough to be tempted of the devil, but he's divine enough to cast the devil into the bottomless pit. He's tough enough to endure the cross and tender enough to walk with me in my suffering. He's human enough to be my friend, but he's divine enough. He's worthy of all my worship. Hallelujah. He's human enough to cry, I thirst. He's divine enough to cry, I am the living water. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's human enough to eat bread with his disciples, but he's divine enough to cry, I am the living bread. He's human enough to get tired and sleep in the back of the ship, but he's divine enough to stand up in the ship, speak to the storm, and cry, peace, be still. He was human enough till his flesh was bruised, but he's divine enough till his bruises were for my iniquities. He's human enough to be stripped at the whipping post lashes across his back but he was divine enough that by those stripes we are healed he was human enough he was human enough hallelujah 
He's righteous enough to judge me, but he's gracious enough to forgive me. Human enough to be wrapped in flesh and die for me, but he was divine enough to have no beginning and no end. He was human enough to be touched by your pain, and he's divine enough to heal your hurts and your wounds, and that's what this whole service is about. That's what resurrection is about. It's a new beginning. This is somebody's resurrection day. You're not, you don't, you're not ready to lay down and die. You're going to live again. You're going to laugh again. You're going to breathe again. You're going to walk again. You're going to walk in victory again. He's human enough to attend a wedding with his mom, but he's divine enough at the same wedding to turn water into wine. He's human enough to be despised and rejected of man, but he's divine enough to be worshipped by the angels. He's human enough to be born 2,000 years ago, but he's divine enough to be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. He's human enough to cook on a fire, but he's divine enough to he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He's human enough to walk with his disciples but he's divine enough to walk in the fire with three Hebrew boys. Hallelujah. He's human enough to be Murray's first baby but he's divine enough to be the seed of the woman. He's human enough, he's human enough to be a baby but he's divine enough to be a lion. Hallelujah. He's human enough to love you but he's divine enough to save you. He's human enough to wipe your tears and your pain but he's divine enough to forgive all your sins. He's human enough to die, but he's divine enough to rise again. He's human enough to bleed, but he's divine. He's holy. He's righteous. He's, he's above this world. He's divine enough to, to, his blood covers all sins. He's human enough to be given a name, but he's divine enough that his name has all power. Hallelujah. 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 Excuse me, Oprah. Excuse me. Hallelujah. You can't call on Muhammad and get to heaven. You can't call on Buddha and get to heaven. Excuse me, lady. Excuse me daughter. Hallelujah. You can't call on new age and get to heaven. You can't try to live better and get to heaven. There is one name that's above other names. And if you try to go any other way, you're the same as a thief and the liar. There's only one way to heaven and his name is Jesus. There's only one door to heaven and his name is Jesus. There's only one thing that'll wash away your sin. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood. And somebody ought to praise him out loud. It don't matter who hates you. It don't matter who's against you. It don't matter your failures. It don't matter your sins. It don't matter where you've been. It don't matter what you've done. There's a way to, there's a way out and his name is Jesus. God bless you dear friends. I want to help you go deeper in God. The team here, my wife and the team have worked countless hours on building a Bible course. Oasis Bible Department. It will take you all the way through the Bible reading, studying the Word of God. It's a free gift to you. You Call or write us. We will mail it to you. You'll fill it out, mail it back, or you can do it online. It'll take you all the way through for a deep study in the Word of God. Touch your heart and change your life. While you're on the phone, can we pray with you? We have prayer warriors standing right by now who will touch heaven for you. We care about your need. You're important to the body of Christ. God bless you. Hey, friend, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. If you or any of your friends or family loved ones are dealing with addiction, we have written a book here. It's people's story of breaking every chain. It's people that were dealing with different types of addiction. If God moved for them, He'll move for you. If He broke the chains in their life, He'll break the chains in your loved one's life. Can we send this to you as a free gift? If you know anyone who's dealing with any type of addiction that needs chains bro broke, God still saves, heals, and delivers, and Jesus cares about you. Contact us here. We want to be a blessing to you. It's a free gift to you, and we'll pay the postage. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. Would you pray for us? Thank you, and God bless you. Hey, friends, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, it talks, and handkerchiefs and aprons were taken off the body of Paul, and special miracles was wrought. We believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We mail out hundreds of prayer cloths here at, here at Oasis Ministries to whatever the need is, to the sick, whatever you're facing. People have put these on their bodies and took them in the operating room. So if you need one of these prayer cloths, would you write us or call us? We'll pay the postage. We want this to be a gift to you. Jesus cares about you. We're praying for you. Thank you and God bless you. Do you know him? Have you met him? Has he forgiven you? You got to call on his name. You got to repent to be forgiven. You've got to pray. He's human enough to be a carpenter, but he's divine enough to be called king of kings. He's human enough to, to die, but he's divine enough to be the first begotten from the dead. 
Luke 2, 7, he was born. Luke 2, 40 through 52, he grew. In John 4 and 5, he was tired. In, in, in John, John 19, 28, he got thirsty and hungry. In Matthew 4, 2, he became physical weak. Matthew 14, 11, Luke 23, 26. He died, Luke 23, 46, and he had a real human body after he had a real resurrected body. Luke 24, 39, John 20, 20, and 27. Hallelujah. He went from per- supremacy to prophecy. He went from transcendation to tragedy, from splendor to suffering, from throne from throne to thorn, from Murray's baby to Murray's savior, from guest at a wedding to be the groom at the last supper. Hallelujah. He went from the high, the heights of heaven to the horrors of a cross. Hallelujah. To, to an empty grave. This was Jesus led up of the spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was, to, he was human enough to be a leader of 12 disciples, but he's divine enough to leave followers from every nation, language, and tongue around the world. He's human enough to stand alone in Pilate's judgment hall, but he's divine enough to ascend into heaven. He's he's human enough to be nailed to a cross, but he's divine enough to save millions through that very death. He's human enough till they gamble for his robe, but he's divine enough to clothe you with a robe of righteousness. He's divine enough. He's human enough to suffer horrible pain at Calvary, but he's divine enough to heal all your pain, and he wants to do it today. He wants to wrap his arms around somebody today. He's come here today to tell somebody, you thought you came for a hayride. You thought you came for a barbecue. You thought you came for to be with your family. You came to know he's, you got a second chance. He set you up. He brought you you're here to tell you, I'm not done with you. If you're still alive, he's not finished. If you woke up, there's a chance. If you can breathe, he's not done yet. He's human enough to cry thirst from the cross. He's divine enough to be a well of living water in you. Do you know him? Human enough to cry, it's finished and it's die. He's divine enough that the name of Jesus is the only way to eternal life. He's human enough to cry, woman, behold thy son. But he's divine enough to be Murray's only hope for eternal life. He's human enough to cry, why hast thou forsaken me? But he's divine enough to hell never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. I'm about to shout right now. Would somebody, would somebody worship him in this house? Hallelujah. He's human enough to feel all your pain, but he's divine enough to be able to heal it. This is what I've came to preach. Your sins will either be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell. Your sins. Your sins. Your sins sins will either be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell. But it will never be overlooked. It will never be overlooked. You you don't go to hell because you're a drug addict, a drug dealer. You don't you, you don't go to hell because you're a murder, liar, thief. The only way you can go to hell is because you're not under the blood. Amen. Heaven is not just a place for good people. There are going to be some wonderful people who's lived a separated, wonderful life. Know this, your sins will either be pardoned or punished, but will never be overlooked. I'm going to keep saying it. Charles Spurgeon said this, and I love it. Let not your sense of sin make let you think little of my master. You are a great sinner, but he's a great Savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Wynn, you don't know how bad I've been. You don't know how big he is. You don't know how low I've gone. You don't know how high he is. You don't know how weak I've been. You don't know how righteous he is. He's altogether lovely. He's fairest of 10,000. He reaches to the uttermost. He pulls out the guttermost. You're a great sinner, but he's a great savior. Don't, don't, don't tell me you've outmatched him. Don't tell me your sins are bigger than his mercy. Don't tell me that your past is bigger than his presence. Repent. Except you repent, you shall in all likewise perish. This has given me a whole new, just so much mercy and compassion for others. It's changed, changed. Listen to this. What is repent? I hear no. 
Some old rough folk, you know. You better repent. Do you know, do you know, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this. You come to the altar and you're, you're slipping around, you're drinking. You come to the altar and you slip around doing drugs. You come to the altar and you slip around some type of sin. Do you know repent is not the act of stop drinking? Repent is not the act of quit doing drugs. Repent is not the act of quit lying, cursing. Repent is simply a change of the way you think. You have thought, my sins are hurting nobody but me. And it's none of nobody's business but mine. But when you repent, when you repent, you start thinking, right, my sins hurt the Lord. My sins hurt my family. My sins are going to send me to hell. When you repent, you start the heck. You start, it changes. Repent. The definition of repent is to change one mind or to change the way you think. You think your sins are hurting nobody but you. Your sins are hurting your babies. Your sins are hurting your family. Your sins are hurting your friends. You think you're the only one suffering for your sins. One souls to the wind, but the whole family weeps to the world. Win. Hallelujah. Do you start thinking different and realizing that I've got one life to live? I've only got one. I've only got one opportunity to walk through this world. I've only got one chance to walk through this world. And I'm not gonna quit preaching till I get in somebody's spirit today. And you realize you gotta quit thinking different. You gotta quit thinking different. I've been going to Brother Jeff Smith's. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we got to get up at daylight and head and preach in northern West Virginia and be back here Saturday. So bring somebody Sunday. Don't forget prior Tuesday. But this, this brother asked me to come preach to West Virginia. He said, Brother Wynn, I've followed you, shared your CDs and DVDs for, for many years. And he said, I go all the way back to letters from hell. He said, when 96, when God gave you that message, letters from hell. Mama, you're here. Preacher, I just wish you'd shut up. I don't hear what you got to say. When you're in hell and your little boy comes up and slaps you and kicks you and bites you and tells you, Mama, that preacher said that was mercy for us. And you said, I don't need his Jesus. And when you said it, Mama, I thought my mind, if my mama don't need it, I don't need it. Mama, if you take your babies to hell, they won't be your friends there. They won't be your, they'll hate you. People, oh, I, I didn't want to go this way. I want to just preach mercy day. But people you work with, it's lost. And you, you, you end up playing with God, never getting it right. You, you think when I get to hell, I, I witnessed to a guy here a while back. I said, I said, when are you going to come to church? You know what's right. You know what's wrong. He leaned over and grinned. He said, oh, Brother Andy, I know you love me, but I really don't want to hear that. If I go to heaven, I'm going to have a whole lot of friends. You have you a lot of people. But if I go to hell and, you know, my drug, I've got a lot of friends there. And I leaned over and I said, I, I won't be mean to you, but if you go to hell, you won't have one friend. You're the man that knows that Jesus is the way. And all those people you sold to and you bought from, you think they're going to be your buddy in hell. They'll, they'll curse you. They'll nice on you. They'll torment you because you, you're the one that knew Jesus was the way. You was the one that knew just one prayer could change our life. You was the one that knew if you'd go to church, you could have a better life. And you think you're going to have friends in hell. I know they got the old song, Highway to Heaven or Highway to Hell. There's no high. There's no parties in hell. There's no highs in hell. There's no laughter in hell. There's no fun in hell. There's no happiness in hell. There's no peace in hell. There's no joy in hell. And there's one way out and his name is Jesus. There's hope for the hopeless. There's mercy for the last. There's strength for the weary. Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is worth a living. 
just because he lives and because he lives I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives all fear is gone because is worth a living just because he lives one more time and because he lives I can face tomorrow all oh, because Jesus lives all my fears are gone I know that I know that I know he holds my future and life is worth a living just because he Hey friend, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. This is one of my favorite books that we've written here, You Can't Kill a Promise. I used to worry about David approaching, approaching Goliath, poor little old me. That wasn't David at all. David said, Goliath, I know something you don't know. I'm anointed to be the next king. I've not sat on the throne yet. I have a promise from Jehovah. I can't die. Somebody's going to die on this field today, but it won't be me. I have a promise. It's for your marriage, for your children, for your ministry, for your business. The enemy cannot kill your promise. You need this book. Call or write us right now. This is a free gift to you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Anthony Wynn Ministries. This is our 20th year of touching hearts and changing lives through TV ministry. And this is made possible by our partners. Because of your kindness, we have reached over 150 million homes worldwide. And we're currently in the process of constructing a new office space and studio building. It is our goal to double in size this year and add new stations to our outreach. Currently, we send out thousands of free resources monthly, and your donations and partnerships make this possible. Partner with us today and become part of our ministry as we reach an orphanage in Haiti, a recovery center, and all our local missions. When you partner with us, you can receive a free DVD or CD, a monthly newsletter, and an Oasis magazine. Just call 1-877-226-4088 or visit our website at anthonywin.org. Thank you. God bless you.